guys, it's Angela from Burso Knits and today I'm going to be showing you how to make this really cute little puppy rattle. In today's tutorial I'm going to be using US terminology and if you have any questions do comment down below. And if you want a copy of the written pattern to follow along with you can find that in my Etsy store and the link is in the description box down below. If you enjoyed the video do consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribe to see any of my future uploads. Right, let's get started. Here are the materials you're going to need to make the puppy rattle. First of all, you're going to need a 2.5mm crochet hook. For my American friends, that's a size C. And here I'm using the Clover Soft Touch Hook. You're also going to need some 100% cotton DK yarn. I'm using the Rico Rumi brand here and they come in balls of 25 grams each. And you're going to need one ball of each of the following colours. Light grey or brown for the main part of the puppy and I'm using shade 3. Dark brown, I'm going to be using for the ears and the eye patch, and I'm using shade 57. White for the puppy's bone, and I'm using shade 1. Blue for the bow, and I'm using shade 32. And finally, you're going to need some pink yarn. You could just use yarn scraps for this because you won't need much. It's just for sewing the cheap details. Here, I'm using shade 8. Moving on, you're going to need a 7cm or 2.75 inch diameter wooden teething ring, a small rattle insert, some soft toy filling for stuffing, and finally some other tools, some scissors, a yarn needle, a stitch marker, and some pins. And check down in the description box below for links to the materials that I used. Now let's get cracking. The head of the rattle is quite a simple amigurumi ball, so we're just going to start with a magic circle. There are lots of different ways to do this. I'm just going to make a loop. I'm going to grab my hook and pull it through. And then I'm going to chain one to secure it in place. I'm then going to single crochet six into my magic circle. Okay, I'm just going to pull it closed. For my second row, I'm going to increase, so single crochet two into each stitch around so that I'm left with 12 stitches. And now I'm going to place my marker. For the next row, I'm going to single crochet one into the first stitch. Then I'm going to increase into the next stitch. And I'm going to repeat that five more times until I'm left with 18 stitches on this row. The next row, I'm going to single crochet two and then increase. And then I'm going to repeat that five more times until I'm left with 24 stitches on this row. For the start of the fifth round, I'm going to start by single crocheting three. And then increasing in the next stitch. And I'm going to repeat that five more times until I have 30 stitches on this row. For the sixth row, I'm going to start by single crocheting four.
and then I'm going to increase one. And I'm going to repeat that five more times until I'm left with 36 stitches. For the seventh row, I'm going to start by single crocheting five. And then I'm going to increase in the next stitch. And I'm going to again repeat that five more times until I'm left with 42 stitches. Row 8 is the last row of increases and I'm going to start by single crocheting 6. And I'm going to increase in the next stitch. And I'm going to repeat that five more times until I'm left with 48 stitches. For rows 9 to 17, I'm now going to complete 9 rows of single crochet. I'm going to single crochet in all 48 stitches around. I'm going to speed this up now, otherwise we'll be here all day, but feel free to pause it here while you complete those 9 rows. Now that I've finished those nine rows, I'm now going to start on the decrease rounds. So for this round, I'm going to start by single crocheting six. And then I'm going to decrease one. Now to do an invisible decrease in Amigurumi, I'm going to go into the front loop of the next two stitches. I'm going to pull my yarn through both of them. And then I'm going to single crochet those two together like that. And I'm going to repeat that pattern. So single crochet six, invisible decrease five more times until I'm left with 42 stitches. To start the next round, I'm going to start by single crocheting five. Then I'm going to decrease next two stitches together. 
and I'm going to repeat that five more times until I'm left with 36 stitches. For the next row, row 20, I'm going to start by single crocheting four. Then I'm going to decrease in the next two stitches. And I'm going to repeat that five more times until I'm left with 30 stitches. For the next round, I'm going to start by single crocheting three. And then I'm going to decrease one in the next two stitches. And I'm going to repeat that five more times until I'm left with 24 stitches. Now before I move on, I'm just going to half stuff my head and insert the rattle before the closing at the top gets too small. I'll just pull this out a bit. I'm just going to snip this tail. I'm now going to make a little hole in the middle and I'm going to insert my rattle. Now I'm going to carry on with my decrease rounds. Okay, so the next row I'm going to start by doing two single crochets and then I'm going to decrease the next two stitches together and I'm going to repeat that five more times until I'm left with 18 stitches. I'm going to start the next row by doing a single crochet one and then decrease one. And I'm going to repeat that five more times until I'm left with 12 stitches. I'm now going to finish stuffing the head through this hole. So I've stuffed the head until it's quite firm. Now I'm going to do my final decrease round. So I'm going to decrease six times until I'm left with six stitches. And I'm now going to snip my yarn tail and I'm going to pull my yarn through to fasten off. Then I'm going to thread my yarn needle and I'm going to draw together this close. So I'm going to go up through the next one. And I'm just going to pull that tight. And then I'm going to go back down through the center. Up somewhere. And as I pull, that will disappear. And that's my head. 
For the ears, I'm going to make them in two different colours. I'm going to make one ear in the original colour, the same as the head, and I'm going to make one ear in this darker brown colour. The first five rounds of the ears are going to be very similar to the way that we worked the head. So I'm going to start with a magic ring. And I'm going to single crochet six into my magic ring. And I'm going to pull that closed. For row two, I'm going to increase into all six stitches until I have 12. Now I'm going to place my marker. For row three, I'm going to single crochet into the first stitch and I'm going to increase into the second stitch. And I'm going to repeat that five more times until I'm left with 18 stitches. For row four, I'm going to single crochet into the first two stitches. Then I'm going to increase into the next stitch. And I'm going to repeat that five more times until I'm left with 24 stitches. For row 5, the final row of increases, I'm going to single crochet into the first 3 stitches. I'm going to increase into the next stitch. And I'm going to repeat that 5 more times until I'm left with 30 stitches. For row six to eight, I am now going to complete three rows of single crochet. So I'm going to single crochet in all 30 stitches around. I'm now going to do one decrease round. So I'm going to single crochet three. And in the next two stitches, I'm going to do an invisible decrease. And I'm going to repeat that five more times until I'm left with 24 stitches. For rows 10 to 11, I'm now going to do two more rows of single crochet. So I'm going to single crochet in all 24 stitches around two times. I'm now going to do another row of decreases. So I'm going to single crochet in the first two stitches. And I'm going to decrease the next two stitches together. And I'm going to repeat that five more times until I'm left with 18 stitches.
For rows 13 to 20, I'm now going to complete eight rows of single crochet. So I'm going to single crochet in all 18 stitches around. Again, I am going to speed this up to save us time in the tutorial, but feel free to pause here until you can complete it. For row 21, I'm now going to do one final row of decreases. So I'm going to single crochet in the first stitch and then decrease in the next two stitches. And I'm going to repeat that five more times until I'm left with 12 stitches. I'm now going to cut my original tail and hide that inside and I'm going to flatten the two parts of the ear together and I'm going to crochet across these two rows to close this seam. I'm going to go into the first stitch and then across into the opposite stitch. So now that I've gone all the way through I'm just going to pull my yarn through both and then finish like a normal single crochet and I'm going to do that across the rest of the ear. I'm now going to snip my yarn tail, but leave enough for sewing the ear to the head. And I'm just going to pull that through. I now have one floppy ear complete. And I'm now going to repeat those steps one more time in the darker color, so I have two ears. Now I'm going to move on to the nose. To complete the nose, I'm once again going to start with a magic ring. and I'm going to single crochet six stitches into the magic ring. For the second row, I'm going to increase in all six stitches around until I'm left with 12 stitches. I'm now going to place my marker. For the third row, I'm going to start by single crocheting one, and then I'm going to increase in the next stitch. And I'm going to repeat that five more times until I'm left with 18 stitches. For the fourth and final row, I'm just going to complete one round of single crochet. So I'm going to single crochet in all 18 stitches around. And I'm just going to slip stitch into the first stitch of round four. I'm going to snip my yarn and I'm just going to pull that through. And there's my nose complete. To make the eye patch, we're going to start with a magic ring again. I'm just going to chain one to secure. And I'm going to single crochet six into my magic ring. I'm going to pull that closed. For the second row, I'm going to increase in all six stitches around until I'm left with 12 stitches. The only bad thing about crocheting with dark colours is that it becomes very hard to see where your stitches are. Normally I would place my marker here but there's only one more row to go so I'm not going to bother. To start row 3 I'm going to single crochet in the first stitch and then increase in the next stitch. And I'm going to repeat that five more times until I'm left with 18 stitches. I 
and now I'm going to slip stitch into the first stitch of round three. I'm going to snip my yarn long enough for assembly. I'm going to pull my yarn through and that is my eye patch complete. To start the body, we're going to start with a slip knot. And we're going to chain 10. Okay, so I've chained 10. Now I'm just going to check with my ring that this foundation chain fits around the teething ring. So you want it to be quite snug there. If you need more or fewer stitches, you can add those in now. Now, starting in the second chain, so one, two, second chain from the hook, I am going to single crochet nine back along this side. Okay, now I'm going to chain one and I'm going to turn my work. That's my second row done. I'm now going to complete 17 rows the same. So I'm going to single crochet nine, chain one and turn. I'm now going to speed this up, but feel free to pause there until you've reached the 19 rows total. For row 20, the final row, I'm just going to single crochet nine, I'm going to slip my yarn with plenty of tail left for sewing and I'm just going to pull that through. And there's my body done. To create the bone, I'm going to create two identical pieces that look just like this and then they'll be sewn together in the middle. So I've done one piece, let me break down how it's made for you. To start the bone, we're going to start with a magic ring again. and I'm going to single crochet four into my magic ring. And I'm just going to pull this closed. For the second row, I'm going to increase into all four stitches until I'm left with eight. You can place a marker now if you want to. I'm not going to because we've just got two little rows to go. So for row three, I'm going to single crochet in the first stitch and increase in the second stitch and I'm going to repeat that three more times until I'm left with 12 stitches in my fourth and final row I'm going to single crochet in the first two stitches I'm going to increase in the next stitch. And I'm going to repeat that three more times until I have 16 stitches in total. And now I'm just going to slip stitch in the next stitch. I'm going to cut my yarn and I'm going to pull my yarn through. I'm going to repeat those four rounds exactly the same, except this time I'm not going to fasten off. Now that I've completed my second circle in the same way, I'm now going to attach these two together. In order to do that, I'm going to take my circle where my yarn is still attached and I'm going to single crochet eight. Let me just place a marker in my last stitch so I don't forget where it was. So now I've single crocheted eight. I'm going to pick up my other circle. So I'm going to attach it here. So I've chosen my stitch where I'm going to attach it. And I'm going to single crochet 16. So in every stitch around that original circle. And I'm now going to complete the row by crocheting in these eight unused stitches from the first circle.
To start the next round, I'm now going to single crochet seven. I'm now going to insert my hook into the next three stitches and I'm going to yarn over and pull up a loop. Okay, I'm going to do that in the next one. And in the final one. So I now have four loops on my hook and I'm just going to pull through all four loops. I'm now going to single crochet 13 stitches. And I'm now going to repeat the process from the other side. So I'm going to go in the first stitch, run over, pull up a loop, and I'm going to do that two more times in the next two stitches. And I'm going to pull through all four loops and then I'm going to single crochet in the final six stitches. So now we should be left with 28 stitches. For my next row I'm going to start by single crocheting six and in the next four stitches I'm going to pull up a loop. One, two, three and four. So I have five loops on my hook and I'm just going to pull through all five loops. I'm now going to single crochet 10. And now I'm going to repeat the process from the other side. So I'm going to go into the first stitch and repeat that three more times. until I have five loops on my hook and I'm just going to pull through all five. And now I'm just going to single crochet in the final four stitches. And now I'm left with 22 stitches. For the next row, I'm going to start by single crocheting two. And then I'm going to do an invisible decrease. I'm going to repeat that four more times. And now I'm just going to single crochet two in the final two stitches. And now I'm left with 17 stitches. To start this next row, I'm going to start by decreasing in the first two stitches and then I'm going to single crochet in the next two stitches. I'm going to repeat that twice more. And now I'm left with five stitches. So I'm going to decrease. I'm going to single crochet one. and then I'm going to decrease in the final two stitches. Now I'm left with 12. Before we move on, I'm just going to stuff this end. I'll pull this out a bit. I'm going to take one of these ends, preferably the longer one, and with my yarn needle, I'm just going to bring it out in between these two lumps here. The other two yarn ends can be snipped and pushed inside. I'm now going to use my soft toy filling and stuff this end firmly. Now that I've finished stuffing the top, I'm going to re-thread my needle and I'm going to wrap my yarn over to the other side and I'm just going to go through the top part so that it comes back out where it started. So I've gone all the way through like that. I'm going to pull it through and then pull that tight. And that creates a division between these two parts. I'm just going to wrap that around a few more times. 
and then I'm just going to weave in my end. For my next row, I'm going to single crochet 12. So I'm going to single crochet in every stitch around. I'm now going to complete five more continuous rows of single crochet. So I've done six in total. Now I've completed my six rows, I'm just going to slip stitch in the next stitch. I'm going to snip my yarn with a long tail and I'm just going to pull it through. I'm now going to stuff this part of the bone firmly. Now I have the two parts of my bone and I'm just going to sew them up in the middle using one of the yarn tails. So I need to hold my two pieces together and work out where I'm going to join for my first stitch. So I'm going to join in this one here to make sure that they are straight. I'm now going to sew across the seam all the way around. Now just before I finish closing the seam, I'm going to just stuff a tiny bit more stuffing in here to make sure that I don't have as noticeable a dip in the middle. Just going to finish sewing this together. I'm now going to weave in my ends. So there's my finished bone. Depending on how much stuffing you put in the middle here, you will probably still have a seam that is quite visible, but we are going to be hiding that with a bow in the next step. To make the bow, I'm going to start with a magic ring. I'm then going to chain seven. Now in the fourth chain from the hook, so one, two, three, four. I'm going to half double crochet. So I'm going to wrap the yarn around my hook. I'm going to go into the fourth chain. I'm going to pull my yarn through. And then I'm going to pull that yarn through all three. In the next stitch, I'm also going to half double crochet. And then I'm going to single crochet two. Finally, I'm going to slip stitch back into my magic ring. Now I'm going to chain four, and this is going to count as my first treble crochet. I am now going to treble crochet four stitches. Now to treble crochet, I'm going to wrap the yarn around my hook twice. I'm going to go into my magic ring and pull my yarn through. I'm going to pull my yarn through the first two stitches. I have three stitches left on my hook. I'm going to go through the next two stitches. So I have two left on my hook and then through those last two together. Okay, so I'm going to do three more treble crochet into my magic ring. Okay, I'm now going to chain four, which counts as my last treble crochet. And I'm going to slip stitch back into the magic ring. Okay, I'm now going to chain four again. I'm going to repeat what I just did on the other side. So chain four, then treble crochet four into the magic ring. I'm going to chain four again, which counts as my last treble crochet. And I'm going to slip stitch back into the magic ring. I'm now going to chain seven. And just like before, in the fourth stitch from the hook, so one, two, three, four, I'm going to half double crochet. I'm going to half double crochet in the next stitch as well. I'm going to single crochet in the next two stitches. And then I'm going to slip stitch 
back into the magic ring. Okay, I'm now going to snip my yarn and I'm going to leave a long tail for wrapping around the bow and I'm going to pull that through and I'm then going to pull my magic ring closed. Okay, so that's my bow so far. I'm then going to take the end that I just snipped and I'm going to go behind my bow up to the top and I'm going to start wrapping my yarn around the bow. Okay, so I'm going to keep wrapping, making sure that it looks neat and that that hole from the beginning, the magic ring, is covered completely. There's not a set number of times to wrap around here, just as many as you think is appropriate until you get the look you're going for. And then I'm going to thread this end into a yarn needle and I'm just going to secure at the back. And there is my bow. Now that I have all of the individual pieces made, all that remains is to sew them together. I'm going to start by assembling the head. So first things first, I'm going to pin my ears so that they are between the fourth and the fifth row away from the centre of the head. And I'm going to do the same to the ear on the other side. I'm now going to sew these in place using the yarn tails. get the ear to sit a bit closer to the head, I'm just going to bring my yarn through to the back where I started and I'm just going to sew a few of these stitches to the back of the head. And I'm just going to weave in my yarn end and do the same to the other ear. So there are my ears attached to the head. Next I'm going to add the eye patch. First I'm going to snip the tail that's going to be hidden underneath the eye patch a bit shorter. My eye patch I'm going to pin in place so that the top is between rows 8 and 9. Okay and I just want to make sure that my eye is just to the left of it so that I can have my other eye on this side. And I'm just going to put a few other pins to pin it in place. The bottom should come roughly to between rows 14 and 15. Once you're happy with the placement of your eye patch, you can sew it in place using the yarn end. I'm going to be inserting my yarn and bringing it up just below the next stitch. The next stitch along on my circle here. I'm going to bring up my yarn here. And then I'm going to insert my needle through both loops of this stitch and I'm going to bring that up like that. I'm then going to go back into the stitch I just came through and I'm going to go under until I can bring it up underneath my next stitch. I'm then going to go through both loops again. I'm going to repeat that same pattern, so going through the same stitch I've just come through and bringing it up just below the next stitch. and then going through both loops of that stitch all the way around until the eye patch is attached to the head. And there's my eye patch in place. So first I'm just going to snip this end that's going to be hidden underneath the muzzle. And we're going to need a little bit of brown yarn, but we're only going to need two or three strands. So I'm just going to separate those out. I'm going to tie a knot in the end. So I'm going to start the bottom of my yarn between rows one and two. So I'm just going to bring my yarn up and I'm going to bring it up all the way to between rows three and four. And I'm going to do it three to four stitches wide. And I'm just going to repeatedly bring strands up to between rows three and four from my starting point. Once you're happy with your nose, I'm just going to come up to the top in one corner and I'm just going to go straight over to the other side to hide the top of the strands. Then to make the mouth I'm going to come all the way down to between rows two and three and I'm going to come back to this point where the bottom of the nose is and I'm just going to repeat that one more time to make it a little thicker.
I'm just going to weave in this end and then that's my muzzle complete. So the top of the muzzle needs to be placed between rows 12 and 13. So I'm just going to pin that in place. And the bottom of the muzzle needs to rest between rows 17 and 18. And I'm just going to bring my needle up at the bottom of the first stitch. And I'm going to sew it in place just like with the eye patch. Now that the seam of my nose is almost closed up, I'm just going to stuff a little bit of soft toy filling in there. And now I'm just going to finish closing this seam. So there's my puppy's face, I just need to give him some eyes and cheeks. First of all I'm going to need a little bit of my original colour of yarn. I'm only going to need two strands of this, I'm just going to pull them apart from the rest of the yarn. I'm going to thread my yarn needle and I'm going to put a knot in the end. And I'm going to bring my yarn up into the eye from somewhere else. So I'm going to bring my yarn directly across to the other side of the eye. And I'm going to bring it down underneath. Okay, now that I have my flat eye, I'm just going to hook around this strand and bring it back into the same spot I'm already in. And then I'm going to go into the next stitch across. I'm then going to do exactly the same thing, except this time I'm just going to bring it up some wax. So there I have one sleepy eye, and I'm just going to do the exact same on the other side, but using the dark brown. So I'm going to take two strands of the dark brown and separate it from the rest of the strand. I'm just going to tie a knot in the end. Okay, I'm going to bring my yarn up to just in line with the nose, but on this round here I'm then going to go across one two three stitches and then I'm going to go down to the row below and there we have it two sleepy eyes I'm now going to work on the cheeks so for the cheeks you're just going to need a bit of pink yarn so I'm going to bring my yarn up just under the eye to the left hand side. I'm just going to pull until my knot disappears inside. Yep. And I'm just going to do a couple of strands of cheek colour. And then I'm going to do the same thing at the other side. Oh, I'm stuck. Help. And that is my head complete. I'm just noticing now that my nose is slightly wonky here, but I quite like it actually. It makes it look cute. Now let's move on to the body. To sew the body to the ring, I'm first going to thread my yarn needle with the long yarn tail end. I'm then going to wrap the body inside and around the ring so that I can see this open seam like this. I'm then going to use my needle to sew up this end by just going into each stitch and finding its opposite on the other side. And I'm going to go all the way along doing exactly the same thing. I'm then going to weave both of these yarn ends back into this seam. Once I've sewn in my yarn ends, I'm then just going to twist the body until that seam that we've just made is hidden on the inside. And there's our finished body. Now to attach the head and the bone. In order to attach the head to the body, I'm just going to need a bit of the head coloured yarn and I'm just going to tie a knot in the end. I'm going to bring my yarn down to the middle and then I'm just going to sew into the middle of the top of the body. I'm just going to find the centre and I'm going to bring my yarn through there. I'm now going to sew the two together firmly.
Still quite fluffy there. Much better. Before attaching the bone to the body, I'm first going to attach the bow on the front. So I'm going to thread my yarn needle and I'm just going to sew this to the front of the bone. I'm just going to do it a few more times just to make sure that it's really secure. I don't want it pulling off. There we go, all ready to sew on. So the last thing to go on is the bone and I'm just going to attach it across the front of the body. I'm going to use a bit of white yarn to do this. So I'm just going to attach my white yarn to the back of the bone. I'm going to bring it through the front of the body to secure in place. Now this is going to be quite fiddly. I'm forewarning you. So I'm going to bring my yarn through the bone rather than fastening off. I'm just going to come out here, the other side where I'm going to attach it. I'm now going to attach the bone at the other side by repeating the steps I just did on the first side of the bone. Once you're happy that the bone is firmly attached, you can weave in your end. And there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to see my future uploads. I upload every Saturday. I'll see you in the next one.